On March 10, 2022, Hubert Josh Hall was leaving his residence in Wright City, Missouri, when Officer Jose Malta Gonzalez of the Wright City Police Department noticed that several of the vehicles parked in Mr. Hall's driveway did not have license plates. Officer Malta parked his vehicle and began an investigation into the unregistered vehicles. Not too bad. Are these your vehicles? Yeah, well, this one isn't. Those two are. Okay, so what's going on with them? They don't have any registration on them. I just, I just bought that one and that one. I took the head off of them. I'm okay. gonna cover for them, man. But you get off my property now. No. I'll get a cover for them. I'm, I'm placing ordinance stickers on okay, all of them. I'll get a cover for them. You know, that, right. Right. can't do that. Right. That's not how it works. Okay. You put your That's stickers not. on. Fine. Okay. Bye. Then you're going to be cited for it. Hey, put your stickers on. I'll take care of it. I'll Bye. just issue citations. Hall from keeping the unlicensed vehicles in his driveway. However, the Wright City Police Department's standard practice is to place a warning sticker on derelict vehicles with a seven-day grace period to remedy the violation. If the officer returns after seven days and the derelict vehicle is still an issue, the officer will then issue a citation. Therefore, while likely not illegal, Officer Malta's decision to forego the seven-day grace period and immediately cite Mr. Hall was a deviation from the department's standard practice. 48, can you copy it in? Okay. I'll take my time. Pull it up here shortly. 10-4, try and get a stop on that uh, GMC Suburban. It just left. That's clear. He wasn't a fan of me being here. Is it his residence? I believe so. He wanted to flip me off and threaten me to get off the property. Officer Malta claims over the radio that Mr. Hall flipped him off and threatened him when in fact, Mr. Hall only gave it the middle finger. While it is firmly established that so-called true threats of physical harm are not protected by the First Amendment, it is clear from the body camera footage that Mr. Hall made no such threats. However, the First Amendment does protect communicative gestures such as giving the middle finger, which means that Mr. Hall could not be criminally prosecuted or even legally detained based solely on the fact that he quote unquote flipped off Officer Malta. Although raising a middle finger is clearly not so-called speech in the ordinary sense of the word as the Supreme Court noted in the 1989 case of Texas. Accordingly, it is almost certain that a court would conclude that Mr. Hall's use of the middle finger was protected by the First Amendment and therefore could not justify an arrest or detention. Good, Good can I help you? you what do you need my driver's license for? What'd you pull me over for? What's that? What'd you pull me over for? For your threats that you made to one of our officers. That's not a threat. What threat? What threat did I make to an officer? I need your driver's license proof of insurance. You need a reason to pull me over. I just gave you that. For what threat? I didn't make any threat okay. to any officer. I haven't. Un no, I am not. Because okay. I did not break the law. So you're not going to give me your driver's license as proof of insurance. Is that correct? For what? I just told you. For what threat? Okay. I'm not going to keep going through Threatening this. an officer is not a crime. I didn't threaten to do anything no, to him. A crime, yes. Flipping, so flipping an officer off is not a crime. Threat to an officer is, I'm not gonna Flipping an officer, officer off, off is not a crime. So it's a constitutionally, and arrest you. it's a constitutionally protected shirt. activity, okay. right? Well, how about I'm gonna break your window? It's a constitutionally protected activity to okay. flip an officer off. That's fine. You can flip him off. You can't make threats to him. I didn't make what threat? This is what threat? Chance, I'm gonna break what threat? threat? Gonna okay, you. first tell me what no, threat no, I made sure. to him. What you threat? What threat? I'm gonna break your window. What threat did I make to him? What threat did I make to him? Driver's license, get out I of will. The here's my here's my thing. Out of the car. Detective Christopher Beard initiates a traffic stop on Mr. Hall. And when Mr. Hall asks why he has been stopped, Detective Beard states that he is being detained for making threats against Officer Malta. In his coverage of this incident, Lackluster indicated that Officer Malta claimed in his report that Detective Beard radioed him to ask about the type of threats Mr. Hall made and that Officer Malta informed him that Mr. Hall had only displayed his middle finger. It is unclear whether it happened before or after Detective Beard pulled Mr. Hall over, but if Detective Beard initiated a traffic stop on Mr. Hall knowing that he had done nothing but flip off Officer Malta it is highly probable that a court would find the traffic stop to be unlawful. And assuming for the sake of argument that Detective Beard was not aware- I had an opportunity to review your case. Okay. <clears throat> One thing I'll say is that uh, to begin, I am going to be voiding all the charges, all the summonses that were issued to you. Awesome. 
I've also spoke with the tow company, and they have agreed to refund the expense you had. $400. They charged me $400. And you will be refunded every penny of that. So let me explain to you why. <laughs> what we have here is a Sydney ordinance that has been on the books for some time that shows that the officers were acting in good faith in accordance with the city ordinance at the time. Yeah, this I is a city ordinance. I'm okay, well, aware of it. sure. Well, I knew he had a right to be on my property. Well, this is this is specifically the manner in which why they placed you under arrest, not specifically the derelict vehicle ordinance. So this is the ordinance labeled disorderly conduct, if you recall getting that ticket from the arresting okay. officers. And the subsection of the ordinance that they used to place you under arrest was this language here. Whenever I reviewed this case, I believe I've that... Seen gestures that are constitutionally protected. You can't make laws that go above and beyond the Constitution. Well, if, if, if you give me an opportunity okay, to finish. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. This was on the books. This was the ordinance that they enforced that they used to place you under arrest. Okay. When I had the opportunity to review the case, I agree with you. That I believe this is in conflict with the First Amendment. Okay. Okay. That that is protected speech. Because of that, all subsequent actions following the traffic stop, regardless if you were guilty of them or not, yeah. are not going to be enforced. Because I do not believe that they had a constitutional right to, to stop me over the first yeah. I've seen people get pounds of so, marijuana thrown out of court for so, unconstitutional stops. Lieutenant Matthews informs Mr. Hall that he is voiding all of the citations against him because he believes the traffic stop was conducted in violation of the First Amendment. As Lieutenant Matthews discussed at the time of Mr. Hall's, the city's disorderly conduct ordinance prohibited so-called obscene gestures, which generally will fall under the protections of the First Amendment. Therefore, it is probable that a court would determine that Mr. Hall could not be convicted of resisting or interfering with a traffic stop because it was unlawful. So again, I understand that you're an argumentative individual. I, I have not I'm understood not an argumentative individual. I'm a very polite sure. person. I have seven kids. Sir. I have been violating my rights before I knew what my rights were. My, my whole, the whole point here and the reason why I've called you, the reason why I wanted to reach out to you is that your, your point here of, of your ability to make obscene gestures toward police or protect them in the First Amendment, as the police department, we agree with you. This subsection of the ordinance, we've already addressed this with our legal counsel that represents the city, mm -hmm. and this ordinance will be amended to remove anything that's in conflict with the First Amendment. Okay. As such, you will be the standing case law that amends this for all future contact, and this ordinance will be amended to where this will never happen again. Okay. Hopefully, now we can put this whole issue behind us. Um, again, I, I have no reason to suggest the officers didn't act in good faith because that ordinance was on the books. That ordinance is going to be amended. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, prior to even calling you, the actual hard copies of the tickets were stamped red and void. Uh, inside of the computer system, I voided all of those out. With respect to the derelict vehicles, I voided those too. And Detective Beard subsequently filed a lawsuit alleging wrongful termination and other mistreatment. As of the date of writing this episode, the case is still pending. It is unclear whether Officer Malta faced any disciplinary action for his role in Mr. Hall's arrest. On December 12th of 2022, Mr. Hall filed a federal lawsuit alleging multiple constitutional violations and state law claims. And on November 15th, 2023, the case was dismissed after Mr. Hall agreed to settle for 100 000 in compensation, which lackluster reported Mr. Hall plans to use to open a pet store. Overall, Officer Malta and Detective Beard get an F for maintaining hostile demeanors throughout their encounters with Mr. Hall, fabricating allegations against Mr. Hall, and arresting him for simply directing a First Amendment protected gesture at Officer Malta. Officer Malta appears to have blatantly lied about Mr. Hall threatening him, presumably in order to justify asking his fellow officers to detain him. And although it is possible that Detective Beard did not know that Mr. Hall did not threaten Officer Malta at the time he initiated the traffic stop, he gets an F regardless, based on his aggressive conduct and repeated threats to break Mr. Hall's window. This encounter demonstrates how an untruthful statement from a single officer can snowball and cause other officers to also violate a citizen's rights. Lieutenant Matthews gets a C, because although he admitted the unconstitutionality of Mr. Hall's detention and voided the citations issued to him, he also claimed to believe that the officers were acting in good faith. When the footage of the encounter clearly shows otherwise, despite Lieutenant Matthews' contention that the officers were relying on the disorderly conduct city ordinance when detaining Mr. Hall, let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic that you would like us to discuss in the comments below.